So, Tom DeChilo, welcome to Utah Valley University. Guys, we've, got, we've actually got a really good, big group here, maybe about 40 to 50 people. Everyone, how'd you like the move? <laughs> um, so, uh, really honored to have you. It's a wonderful film. So, you know, I, I know a lot about this film just from studying and stuff, but most of the students probably don't. And this film came about through, uh, through some hardship on your part. You know, I got out of film school and um, went on a detour of shooting films for people uh, and studying acting. And it is actually eight years after I got my degree uh, that I actually made my first film called Johnny Swade. And you know what it took to get to get that film made was was uh, just the most massive endeavor that you could imagine. And even to the point that when I met an unknown actor by the name of Brad Pitt, my producer said, "You're not casting that guy." And I, I, I said, "What are you talking about? This this is the guy." You know, he says, "You're not casting him. Uh, he's a he's a fucking nobody." This is what he says to me. And. Uh, I turned my back on this guy and walked away because I knew that Brad Pitt was the guy. And I also knew that he was going to be a star. Uh, I eventually made the film. So, you know, that miracle, that first film miracle happened. Uh, you know, there was so much potential for the film. It, it won the best picture at the Locarno Film Festival. A company named Miramax picked up the film for the United States and immediately decided to sit on it for about a year and a half because the persona that Brad plays in Johnny Swade was very, very different than the persona that people fell in love with in Thelma and Louise. Ultimately, the film was released in the United States in about two theaters, and, and it died in about a week and a half. So my first feature that I had spent about five years trying to make came and went in a week. My next script had already been written. It was called Box of Moonlight. It was all, you know, everything ready to go. Uh, as a result of what happened with Johnny Swade, I couldn't get the money. And I suddenly realized that it was never going to happen. And when I realized that, uh, it was this combination of homicide and suicide. And I was so in such a fucked up place, you know. And my wife's cousin, was getting married and she invited us to the wedding. And uh, I went there, I'd never had a martini in my life and in the state I was in, I had three of them. I was, I was, I was so drunk, I was literally blind. And out of nowhere, this guy comes up to me out of this haze and he says to me, you're so lucky, man. You know, you made, you made a movie, Johnny Swade, lights, camera, action. I told him, shut the fuck up. I said, <laughs> You know, you don't know the first thing about what it's like to make a movie. I said, you know, there you are. You could have an actress that's that's ready to, to do a scene. And next thing you know, the camera screws up. Something happens and you don't get it. I said, making a movie can be the most tedious fucking bullshit you've ever been through in your life. And right then, I had the idea to make Living in Oblivion. It just hit me. Uh, a series of accidents that happened on the set whether intentional or not, but they aborted this, this very fragile process that making a film is anyway. And, and the miracle was that, that Catherine Keener was, was staying with us when I wrote it. I, I literally went home from the wedding and wrote the first half hour in about three days. Uh, she was staying with us and I gave her the script, hearing her laughter, it was just amazing. And we made a vow to each other that we were going to make this film, no matter what. At that point, it was a half an hour film. And we raised $37,000 in about a week, came up with, with about a five-day shooting schedule, and shot the first half hour. And that's how it all started. Roll, Sam. Roll camera. Roll it. Scene six, take one. And action. Action. 